Building your own temperature monitoring using one wire sensors costs almost nothing and I'll show you exactly how to build it. In fact, I embedded four of them into the walls of our house and the real world data from them is very interesting. I know more about our house's temperature than my own body temperature at this point. All right, so how do you connect these sensors? Black for ground, a red for 5 volts or 3.3 volts, and a data pin which is yellow. So first I will connect it to my Vago clips here. In order to make this work, we need a resistor between our VCC and signal line. I will put one exactly here. This should work with a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. So let's add one of them between VCC and data. So for your reference, this is what the schematic looks like. Now we need to connect it to our Arduino. Let's connect it to ground. This is VCC and then our signal pin 8. It doesn't matter. So let's create some software. I will use a library. Let's search for DS18B20 because this is what this temperature sensor is called and I will use this library here, Dallas Temperature Install. Let's see if that works. There are a lot of libraries as you can see, so if it doesn't work, we can pick another one. Let's go into the example codes. One wire search. Okay, there are a lot of examples, which is great. Let's use one wire search. So this is interesting. It searches on all Arduino pins. I connected it to pin eight, so let's, let's see if it finds the correct pin. Pin 8! It found a device on pin 8. Yeah, that's great. I would like to get some temperature. Simple sounds good. I'm connected to pin 8. Let's see if that works. It's a different portrait. Ooh. Great. So it gets the temperature of this sensor. And if I touch it, then the temperature increases, as you can see. Awesome. Now the nice thing about these sensors is that you can use multiple ones and connect all of them to the same pin. That works because it's a one wire bus. On the one wire bus, every sensor has its unique address. And by the way, this is a practical video. So if you're interested in the details of how this one wire bus works, uh, let me know in the comments. I can make a video about it, but this video is how to get it up and running. I will connect the second sensor just to the same VCC, of course, and to the same ground. And this is the great part, also to the same signal. They are now in parallel. This is what the schematic looks like. Dallas multiple, multibus, no, not multibus, multiple. Pin eight. We defined two thermometers here, inside and outside. We can add the addresses manually. If you remember when we did the scan, the, the sensor replied with its address. And so we could use this device address here to assign it or we dynamically assign it. Right now I don't know both addresses, so I will not define this. It will search for how many devices there are. It will check if we are in parasite power mode. Parasite power mode is where we don't need VCC. In parasite power mode, the sensors are supplied by the signal line, which is crazy. So you only need two wires then we truly have a one wire bus. You only have ground and one wire. And it also is the power line at the same time. Really cool. Right now we just assign the first sensor to inside and the second one uh, to outside thermometer. As I mentioned, you should only do this in the beginning and then you should manually assign them because you always have the inside thermometer with the same address it doesn't change normally and then it should report the temperatures and it also converts it into fahrenheit let's try 
So we found two devices. Parasite power is off and the device zero address is that one and device one address is that one. The resolution is nine. We're requesting temperatures and we're getting temperatures. Currently they are off by one degree, maybe because I already touched one of them. So if I touch this sensor, you see how the temperature increases. And if I touch this one, then the second one also increases. Very interesting. All right, so stop. And now what we should do is we should copy the device addresses. So the inside thermometer is, for example, this one. So that one is done. And we have the second one. And now that we manually assigned them, we don't need this stuff right here. So let's remove this. Yeah, let's remove it here. We need to manually assign this because if we add another one, it might get index zero and then everything is wrong. As promised, I'm using these sensors in the house. So let's take a look at the data. This is the real world data of one week inside of our wall, which is crazy to look at. Guess which one is outside and which one is inside. The turquoise one is outside. You see a huge range of different temperatures. So it goes down to 18 degrees during night and then it goes up to almost 23. It's almost a sine wave. It's really beautiful. And then you see how this temperature propagates through the wall. The red sensor is very close to the outside of the wall. And then the yellow sensor is deeper inside of the building. And then finally the blue one is almost inside of the building. You might be confused by this. What is this? You see it here, you see it here, you see it here. This is our wall heating system kicking in. And the interesting stuff is if the wall heating system kicks in, you see a little bit of effect here. Basically no effect here <laughs> because the wall is so thick. So yeah, I really, I really love this. I'm using exactly the sensors here inside of the wall. Let me know what you think, what could I calculate using these temperatures? Maybe something like the thermal capacity of the building? Very interesting. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe to this channel if you're ready to dive deep into the world of Arduino. If you're interested in smart home projects, please also check out my power over ethernet room sensor project. I'm creating my own room sensor here. I already have a playlist. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.